Hello my beautiful friends, it is Mimi here today and I'm here today with Alex. Hello! It's so fun to actually be sharing the stage, whatever you want to call it. Camera so, frame. Yeah, the camera frame, I think that sounds better. <laughs> I love filming with other people, especially filming with you! Yay! And today is a video that we've thought of filming since Alexa turned one and obviously now she it's been half a year so this is like parent life we should film this video half a year is gone we're like she's, okay we should really film this video so she's 18 months now she's yeah she's turning she's turning 18 like literally in a few days so yeah so it's, it's a year and a half yeah it's exactly yeah. a year and a half oh baby is so big now yeah but this video has been in the making as a mini set since one she turned one and i thought hey it would be cool to like compile all our kind of learnings and thoughts and uh, up from the first year and uh, as I said it maybe uh, things I wish I knew before. yeah I don't know what we're gonna title this video yet basically something like all the lessons we've had since we had Alexa so since we had a child because you kind of imagine things to be one way but then you have a child and things are well they could be completely different I thought it would be an exciting thing to share with you guys because I find that when we meet our friends the ones that you know we haven't seen for a while the ones that know that we have a child now that's like the first thing that they ask us are like what, what have you learned since you had Alexa like what are some big takeaways I guess so, people who don't have kids yet especially or, yeah the ones yeah. that don't have so kids like the ones with kids don't really ask that question that's true <laughs> so it's more like first time parents because we're first time parents there's a lot of a lot learning. Learning. a whole new world that opens up to you so lots of interesting so let's get into it let's especially in the first year I'm just trying to think how we can make it this video not like one hour or long because when you get Alex and me in one video both of us love to talk <laughs> So I'm gonna do my best to keep it concise. So I told Alex come up with five things that you have learned. I have seven or eight. Yeah. He has seven and eight. I don't know his um, lessons basically. I, I wanted to keep it more interesting and more of a surprise to me. They may be the same ones as I do have on my list. I have five. I have my phone here. I'm also drinking some uh, green tea in case you see me sipping on a cup. Water. That's what I have here. And let's get started. Let's go. All right. So my first takeaway or my first lesson that I've learned since having Alexa is how responsible I am as a person. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think I ever <laughs> realized how responsible. This is more like an internal lesson that I've had about myself. I knew I was responsible my whole life, but I didn't know to which level I was responsible, to what extent. And ever since I had Alexa, for example, even before I had Alexa, I always knew that when I have Alexa, I'm gonna get somebody to help me with her because I never intended to stop working. I love what I do. I'm full of energy and passion for what I do. I wanna do so much more in my life in regards to my career or the businesses that Alex and I have or the businesses that we wanna create. So I always knew I'm not gonna stop working. Obviously, if you don't want to stop working, you need somebody to support you, whether your parent or, you know, your husband's parent. In our case, we don't have anybody in London. Everybody lives in Toronto. So I knew I was going to hire somebody to help me out, sort of like a housekeeper who can also babysit Alexa. But I just didn't realize how responsible I am. So when I did hire somebody eventually, at first Alex's mom was helping us the first few months and I so appreciated that because it's so nice to have family around because you're clueless yeah. when you give birth and like you're given this child and you come home and you're like, what do I do with you? <laughs> so it's so amazing to have somebody older who has gone through this experience. It was amazing having Lydia for the first like four or five months, I think four and a half, and then she so went like back to four, Toronto. Yeah. yeah, when we came back from Cape Town. And then we hired this lady, Natasha, who was so wonderful. And she was sort of like a housekeeper and also helping me out with, Nata with Alexa if I ever had any questions or sometimes babysitting her. But again, I didn't realize how responsible I am. So even when we had Natasha, I just couldn't let go of control to like let her change the diaper or for feed nap. her or put her for a nap or pick her up from a nap. I wanted to be there all, I mean, not wanted, it's not past tense. I'm still the same <laughs> to, this, to this moment. So like, I want to change every single diaper. I want to be there. And I feel so responsible for Alexa's experience as a child. And I know it doesn't have to be this way. There's all kinds of parents and I have zero judgment towards any parenting style. Um, whatever feels right is what's important. But I just didn't know I would be so responsible, which makes 
it's hard obviously for me to work and do all the other things that I want to do but right now I just like decided to prioritize Alexa as my main priority and then everything else up after that comes after that yeah I guess from, from my side that was something that I knew I learned about Mimi uh, is that because prior to ha us having Alexa we pretty much been in a relationship for almost 10 years I think oh my before God, Alexa yeah. and so we've been together for a long time we know a lot about each other but I would definitely say there's a lot of new things that we learn about each other in this experience and that is definitely one thing I really thought that Mimi was gonna be more like, yeah, like let's get to work, let's hustle, because Mimi is. But very, I'm still hustling. Yeah, don't get. I know you're still hustling, but I'm saying like not to the extent that well, you know, yeah, usually it's like yeah. usually like we work actually like, from I guess from other perspective you guys actually don't get to see, but prior to Alexa especially, we'd be like working a lot. And you know, to a degree of like workaholism, probably <laughs> at some point. <laughs> that sounds like alcohol. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But but to us, it wasn't like that because we were so passionate about what we do, our businesses, and our work that we never feels like work, and that's why it's so hard to stop, especially because we're partners, like as as a couple, but also as business. So it was something new, even for for me to adjust as well. Is like I respect, of course, it's incredible that Mimi has made that decision, but it was something new I did not expect. That Mimi would go that hardcore and still to this day uh, with uh, the amount of time that she wants to spend with Alexa. Uh, with me personally, like, I love Alexa, she's awesome, uh, but for me it is a little, like it's it's very intense and I guess... Um, yeah, well, share some lessons. So some that lessons. was my lesson is yeah. number one that like I feel strong responsibility and just like the extent of that responsibility. Yeah, I'll say for, for my thing overall, this is actually not on, on my thing, but I, I think it's relevant, <laughs> is it is really difficult and I'm usually not the person to, I'm optimistic, I'm all about like uh, embracing half cup full, like uh, all positive, however having a child is no joke um, and I, think, I don't think anybody or anything it really prepares you um, for that experience and we have multiple businesses and people say running businesses is hard or that. So easy ah, compared. It's like, well, I guess to us because like I said, it's something that we're used to, we know, but having a child, especially the first one, is a lot harder. I know if we, if we would ever have a second one, I don't think we would uh, from our, our experience. I think we're pretty... It's not something it's, we... Yeah, yeah it is, we're not pretty... But what I'm saying is uh, first time around, it is very hard. But okay, going back to my first lesson was the first, first three months, are like really tough. Um, it's a boot camp. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I have a lot of comparisons, like I said, because we have multiple businesses that uh, to when you start a business or launch a new thing, like the first year is always the toughest. So the first three months is even like, it's really like full on. And I would say, especially for you. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, so you, you can kind of kind of. Let's not go there. <laughs> but I'll say even from my side, it was a big adjustment. So I know you were the one breastfeeding. Yeah, yeah. seven. <laughs> yeah, but it's, just, it's, it's a, an adjustment. It's a big lifestyle change. It's an emotional you know? adjustment. Yeah. It's a big lifestyle change. So is that your lesson? That was my lesson. Yeah, like the, the first, first three, three uh, the first three months are tough. However, things get easier every quarter, Absolutely. and I find like it's it's not like it's every quarter. Like there's always like you know there's like because when we got to three months, people are like oh it'll, three months will get easier. Then they're like oh no six months. And when you get to six months, they're like oh actually nine months. And then you get to nine months, they're like oh actually after a year. And after a year, so there's always these like progressions. After a year, it's like three years. <laughs> No, but I would say it's definitely gotten easier after six months for me when you introduce solid food. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. And then when they start walking, especially if you have an independent child, like like Alexa is, like the more independent she becomes, the more the she easier, can do yeah. and express, the happier she becomes. And it just makes me happy, obviously, when she's happy. Cool. So what's your next lesson? Okay, so my second lesson is how much you can love someone. I know it sounds very cliche when it comes to loving children, but... Like you think you'll have a child and then you will love them. But the intensity of love that you feel for your child, that I'm getting emotional obviously talking about this, is just unreal. And um, I especially felt this when I first had her, like not like right away, but like the first few months because like I was breastfeeding her all the freaking time, like literally like almost 12 hours a day. And and then she started getting bigger and more independent and then you know you you can kind of see the trajectory like one day she will grow up she'll move out and it's like oh my god it's like if she ever leaves like piece of my heart will leave or anytime she will be away like even now probably that's why i struggle still being away from her for too long is that you grow something inside of your body which is incredible i still can't get over that and then that becomes an independent entity 
and then they go and do their own thing and it's they literally have their a part own of you. Yeah, it's that is a part of you it's like there's a quote that goes something like having a child is like having your heart walk outside of your body <laughs> and i still feel like this you know like when she's around but especially when she's away i always feel like it's like bittersweet. I'm so happy and I want her to be independent and I want her obviously to go amaz to go and do amazing things in her life. But at the same time, I will probably always feel like a piece of my heart is missing. Not attachment. Yeah, then you have to practice that attachment. And, and obviously that's why I think it's so important now to establish a great relationship with your child when they're young. So when they're older, they actually want to come and hang out with you. Because a lot of people think, oh, I'll, I'll become friends with my child later in their life. Maybe that's possible. Personally, I think it's about establishing this base now. So you have that foundation when they're older, they actually want to spend time with you. So I'm hoping for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lesson number two. Lesson number two is for, for me, the other lesson is different for guys. Uh, sleep trainer is your best investment you can make. I have a point uh, on that. And, 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 and the, uh, so my point on that is that, so the, the thing is that I'm, I'm always bothered by is that the previous generation somehow they forget about like what they did when that, so even though we had our moms there, kind mm -hmm. of present or support, when we would ask them certain questions, they're like, like basic oh, questions like, like, so what do we do now with like, that? Sleep. Like, like, oh, they'll how often sleep. does she they'll, need to sleep? They'll just sleep. They'll, like, they'll, they'll figure it out. And I'm like, what? I'm like, that doesn't make sense. And then with time, uh, you know, started just doing some uh, our own research. Uh, my mom did uh, give us one book that helped her out uh, mm -hmm. before. She's like, oh, just, you should maybe read this. Yeah, something and that about was, sleep training. Yeah, something about a sleep baby or something like that. There's lots of these books. And then uh, I guess we got I started uh, reading into it. And Alexa, we were, she was a very great sleeper, like especially the first. Long, yeah. Until we went to Toronto and that whole Toronto trip, yeah. and we, the, 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 you know, that was adventures at 10 weeks. Before that, she would sleep like seven, eight hours straight at night, which was incredible. Um, and then after that, kind of things broke up, and and then we're like, okay, what do we do now? Because now she's waking up like every three hours or so, mm -hmm. like the normal babies. <laughs> so like, like, yeah, ninety percent of all. Yeah, this is like after three months. Or what do we do? So that's when we uh, did. Uh, well, I was the one pushing for a sleep trainer, but I said, meet me only when you're ready. And then you finally kind of. Uh, did your research, you found somebody uh, here in London, we hired them and it was the best, it was, yeah. like, it was not cheap, but it was yeah, literally it the best money, expensive. best investment you can make. Sleep is honestly incredible when you can get it and I think this was at five, six months? No, she was probably five, yeah, about five, five months. months and like Alex said, we did hire a sleep trainer who comes in and explains how to do this process. So basically with sleep training, it's about a child learning to self-soothe without depending on a pacifier. She never took pacifier anyways. Yeah. Or a breast, which is something she did depend on because I used to breastfeed her to sleep, which is a habit eventually you have to break anyways. Um, so having the sleep trainer was amazing because she came in for 24 hours and sort of helped us understand how this works. And naps. it's very hands-on, yeah, how the naps work obviously how the how the nights work and how at that point she was actually ready to sleep through the night and literally two days of doing this method and she slept through the night and just wanted to mention that it is very hands-on it's not like you close the door and you let the baby cry you're in there every three to five minutes if they're if they're crying you just like go in and out in and out until eventually you know they they understand and learn that it's time for them to fall asleep and they break the habit of depending on something to soothe them to sleep. Literally for her it was two nights, maybe even less, and like she started napping in the cot before that she was sleeping in the pram, for which her is nap. a stroller yeah. in the, we call it pram here. In, in <laughs> you can, yeah. And anyways, I don't want to make this a whole other subject, but sleep training honestly saved our lives. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. So ever but, since five months she was sleeping through the night, she was doing her naps in the bed at home, and life became so much more predictable. Before that, every day was like, oh my God, is she gonna sleep? How long is she gonna sleep? Every day was so different and stressful. And I guess to add on to that, these are actually my other lessons, but yeah. I might as well, I think, get into it one second, is that, like, number one, naps, uh, no, my learnings, naps are very important. Like, yeah. super important. Uh, and and three, just on the whole. This was one of my lessons too, so we're just okay. combining. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so. No, so uh, I'll just to add on to yours, so sleep is everything, not only for adults, because I always knew as an adult, as an older person, not older, but like 
a person who is not a child. More mature? As a more mature human being, <laughs> that sleep is important for everybody. If you want to lose weight, if you want to be happy, in any case, sleep is 50%. Yeah, 50% so sleep is massive. It's so important to get an adequate amount of sleep and also to go to bed earlier rather than later. Um, it's something that we still struggle with. But to the child who is growing and whose brain is developing, sleeping is even more important. And we had this consultation with a sleep trainer when we were in South Africa last year. And she said something that I'll never forget. She said, how come we don't give enough knife to a child? because it's dangerous, right? You're never gonna give a knife to a child because you know they're gonna cut themselves, they're, they could injure or even kill themselves with that because it's a dangerous tool. So she says, not getting enough sleep is the same thing like having a sharp knife in your child's hand. It is, um, it can potentially create some sort of, um, um, not mental illnesses, but like learning disorders. If they don't get enough sleep or if they're not napping, they're not developing uh, adequately. So she said all these things that were backed up by research that made so much sense and just made us even more aware that we need to figure out this whole sleep situation. And yeah, I'm just so grateful that we did. And yeah, that's the biggest learning we've had. Sleep is important and once you figure it out, your life becomes so much easier when you have a child. Yeah, and I guess on the other thing, just the learning on top of the sleep is, routine is your best friend. And uh, what, the reason I... Is that another lesson? Yeah, it's yeah. one of my lessons, one of my points, yeah. like after the nap. And We're not reason, routine people. Yeah, the reason I wanted to point this out, I think the reason it was a big adjustment to us with the whole baby thing is because we're like, opposite of what routine is we're we so love the reason we're entrepreneurs we love being spontaneous we love being like hey let's just go to like we never plan yeah let's just go to france this weekend let's just, let's just do this or hey let's just go out right now or do this and when you have a child you understand that you your is your responsibility to take care of this human being and before i remember people saying to me like routine is your best friend i'm like what do you mean like routine i'm like we're, they'll adjust and we and this some, even some people say they'll adjust to our routine but what we, it's possible. I, it's, I think it's possible, but I think what we've learned is that it is uh, so important for the child and it will make your life easier and make their life easier if you do have some sort of a routine. And that's why with, that's what one of the things that the sleep trainer did introduce is that the whole... Yeah, like, predictable the pr routine predict makes them relax more yeah, and they're more relaxed, they fall asleep better. Exactly, in regards to eating, in regards to where they sleep, all that stuff. And yeah, okay, it's, 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 uh, it's an inconvenience to, especially to people like us. However, the difference is massive. We're able to have uh, dinners together, we're able to invite people. She uh, never uh, wakes uh, up at night. Yeah, we, we're able to have yeah. like, uh, you know, people come over, we're able to go out, somebody will stay in. Like, and she never wakes up. So even when people, <laughs> if our mom would stay, or if, if uh, like, uh, like an, uh, our housekeeper would, uh, would stay in, but they don't have to do anything because they just sleep. So it's, it's like the best job ever for people, but it's all because there's a set routine and it makes it healthy for everybody. So you sleep. have space to recharge, then you can give more to your child. And also what it taught me is that how important routine is for your own life. So yeah. you yourself, if you're having trouble with sleeping, with anxiety, with Absolutely, kind of thoughts, yeah. one of the biggest things that you can change in your life is to create, create a routine a for yourself. Yeah. Have a morning routine, have an evening routine, create a predictable thing. So when do you go to sleep? When do you wake up? And Going outside to a park for fresh air, exactly, working yeah. out, things like that. Exactly. It can really make a huge difference, not only to a small baby child, but just, it, it made me aware how important just in general routine is for us as people. And I think basically any lesson we learned in regards to Alexa, it applies to adults oh, yeah. as well. So everything is applicable. That I, that's why I thought it would be interesting, not only for us to share this, to have this as a memory for us to remember this, because you forget, like we said, <laughs> our parents forget now. They're like, oh, this, this was so long ago. So it's amazing to have this so we can always refer back to this or you know, for you guys to learn from what we have learned. But I think anything we share here applies to everybody at any age. So my next lesson is, let's see, number four, so how good. much time we have before we have children and freedom. This is a big one. I what never was... realized how much time oh, okay. and how much freedom you have before you have a child. <laughs> Once you have a child, the amount of time you have significantly decreases if you are if you choose to be a present parent obviously there's people who have full-time nannies or put their ch children in full-time daycare by choice or because of necessity because they have to go to work it doesn't matter but if you 
fully decide to dedicate and take care of your child, uh, full-time or part-time, doesn't really matter, when you're with them, you have to be really present because they're moving, they're so active, they're so intense. You cannot do two things at the same time. It's very rare that I'm able to go on my computer and answer an email if Alexa is in the room. Very rarely, I might have a chance, but it's literally, it almost never happens. So it's just so important to A, be ready to have children because I always felt like I want to feel ready. And some people say, oh, if you feel that way, you'll never be ready. That is not true. In my case, I felt ready to have a child. And because I waited for the time when I felt ready, I didn't have resentment after I had Alexa. So I think it's just so, it just reinforced my belief how important it is to be ready because once you have a child, your freedom is gone to a certain extent. Obviously you can still create freedom for yourself if your mom or you have a nanny or you put them in the daycare. But if you want to have a full on experience, then you will have very little time for yourself and for doing anything else like creating a new venture that you want to create. So do everything or at least most things that you want to do before you have children because if you have a child it's only fair to them for you to also spend time with them and dedicate yourself to them at least in the first few years of their lives because it's such a special experience that you can't have back. So that's what I've learned now when people who don't have kids complain to me about time I'm like you have so much time <laughs> if i can do it if i can manage to work out or if i can manage to launch a new business or do anything then you definitely can do that because you don't have a child and i have to let's say work around her schedule like at night or in the evenings so just understand how much time you actually have because it's truly incredible and the freedom obviously yeah you can go and do anything at any time whereas when you have a child it's almost like you have a curfew to go home or like you have to be with them you can't just like take off and do whatever you want to exactly and i am very present with the whole experience and i you know i put down You're like an said, every father. night i wake up every morning so i'm like i'm there as, as present and it's definitely it's like it's like i said it's, she's it's very a, lucky yeah it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a choice uh, that we make um, however, definitely, it, you don't have that much freedom. And like I said, for me, I guess on that, just to mm -hmm. tell you on that lesson, I just wish we did more like crazy adventurous travel where you put it, you know, you wouldn't have kind of kids out. Like going into like really, like, I would want to go to like more like third world countries where it's a little, a little wild. Like you can still go with a child, but yeah. they need to be slightly yeah, older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We put like vaccines and things like yeah. other, I like, I'm like, they're going it, to different yeah. places, you know, it gets yeah. a little more challenging than if you just, just yourself, you're like, hey, whatever, like, I'll yeah. puke for a few you nights. You think more, like, you think three times yeah, before you go to a place. Exactly, like, because you don't want to, like, you, you, when you're responsible for yourself, like, hey, cool, whatever, I'll go to this place. Drink some dirty water, it'll be all right. If I get but, sick, I get I'll sick. Get sick. Yeah. But like when you have a, another being, especially that's very still adjusting, you, that's not something that you know you want to do. So we're, we're gonna have to wait a few years till she gets a little bigger, but then we'll, we'll go off, have some adventures as well. She, we have to see her, or show her as well, other sides of the world. Uh, so, but my next lesson yeah, would next? be embrace ongoing changes uh, that's a and, great and grow spurts. So. Uh, just in general, because Again, applies to yeah, it applies to everybody, every everyone and everybody, but also in regards to sleep as well. Like the thing with sleep training as well, don't think it's like a one-time thing. And then, and then, and then, oh, okay. And that's the thing I think with parents that I learned. It's not like you feel like, oh, okay, it's good now. Like I, I think I got this, you know. Like and then, boom, like a new thing. So I think it's the same thing with, with life. It's just like, I guess that first year of, of uh, the, uh, having a baby, like it's just so fast. So the changes are, are so rapid. Changing. So So th the same thing in life, but, but that was just a big lesson to me. Just like embrace ongoing changes. Like don't, and I think a lot of people also just in your normal life can get upset when like, why is this changing? I just maybe figure it out, what, what happened? But mm -hmm. You ha the only way forward uh, is to embrace these changes and not think of like, well, I wish like the naps, for some people like the naps were still there and then they're dropping their nap and now they're not sleeping anymore when you thought you finally got that nap figured out. So, you know, things always change. So embrace those changes um, and understand that you will have to redo some stuff or learn new routines or adapt to it. Mm -hmm. um, so don't think that that thing that worked uh, last month is going to work this month because you never know. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's so true and it's so applicable to all of us in everyday life. Okay, so my next lesson, let's see. We're almost done. 
You really can't imagine having kids and the emotional intensity that comes with it until you have a kid. And I know it's a tough one actually to accept because I always said that of course I can imagine having a child. And you can to a point, but some things you just can't imagine. Like I said, the intensity of love or the intensity of emotions. Like for example, the reason it is easier for me to run a business rather than raise a child is because I'm not afraid to lose a business personally. I know many people would. I'm not attached as much. Obviously I'm attached to a point, but like I'm, I'm, I always believe it's going to be fine. But with a child, there's definitely a stronger emotional attachment naturally um, to this child, to what they're going through, if they're in pain, if they're sick, if they're crying. So that emotional attachment is so strong and you can only experience it when you're actually in that experience. It's really hard to imagine being a parent. You can, but the reality will slightly or significantly can be different. Even though I always loved the idea of being like a super young parent, like a 22 year old with a child, when I was 22 I just wasn't ready, neither were we ready in our relationship to have a child. So I think I had a child at the right age where I felt stable emotionally and I just had to give because when you have a child you have to give so much of your time, yourself, your emotions, your energy. You have to have to give otherwise you are going to struggle a lot. I'm just going to be honest. I think that's a great point uh, in regards to be ready to give because I think a lot of people come from that place where they think they can take. Like you know you're doing this, this is your experience, this is what you're going to get out of it. But in reality, it is a lot of giving, especially for us, say, for the mom, uh, for the mother in, in it. It's like, it's a lot of giving. You so. give birth, you know, you're <laughs> pregnant for nine months, then you breastfeed if you, if you, if you, you choose, choose to. to yeah. And regardless, I think, yeah, it's just a more intense experience for a woman, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, cool. Can we... Uh, yeah. Okay, my, my next lesson, let's see. I think this is really important. Um, your relationship and values will be challenged and tested in the relationship. I like that one because this kind of leads us to a possible other video that we can film if you guys are interested to see. Well, what were you thinking? About how our relationship changed since we had Alexa, but that's a whole different topic. So really? if you guys want to see that, you can definitely like this video and comment below if you'd like to see that. But well, it's a whole different topic. Oh, I mean, I mean, you can go into that right now. I'll go into that like from, from uh, I guess, my experience. And what I mean by that is that uh, Mimi and I, like, Honestly, like we are so grateful for the relationship we have now, but especially when before Alexa, our relationship was like really seamless because we've been together, like I said, for almost 10 years. It's just, it, it, it is super awesome because we knew each other at that point really well. We've been together for more than yeah. 10 years. And you, you married and, for yeah, eight. Yeah, married. This May. Yeah, eight yeah, eight married years. for eight this year. So before that, six years, eight, eight plus years of being together. So you think like, and Mimi and I spend like every day together, twenty four hours. We travel together. We work together. We do everything together. So in a, in in, I always say like in reality, our relationship is not like we've been together for like eight years or ten years. We've been together for like fifty years because because actual mileage of yeah. time spent interacting with each other and being in difficult moments together is like super high, uh, especially comparing to a lot of people who you know have they work separately, they don't have they don't see each other, they just think but we're, it's like really full on. That's what one of the questions that a lot of people will ask us is like how do you guys do that? Because you guys are always together. And so that's what I want to say is that you think you know a person or their values, but in those moments, in those situations, you really get to find out new things about the person that you didn't think you knew or you thought you... Yeah, it definitely challenged yeah, Or you me. thought you were really like... That's a great point. You were aligned and you're like, you kind of knew it and you're like, whoa, no, okay, I, I'm like this. So uh, because I think uh, what I was reading today is well, like in certain uh, intense situations in life, you really try, you really find out the true character of people. That's why it's so good to travel with people because you really find out what they're like, you know, in those situations uh, or in, in tough life situations. When and they're outside of their comfort zone. Exactly. So because having a child, especially your first child, is such a high emotional experience, uh, it re you really learn new stuff. So that's why I'll say uh, be prepared. I think, uh, you know, I'm sure the overall uh, research proves all these things mm -hmm. that I'm saying, but it's important to understand that, know that, 
and yeah. and be in constant work on and you have less time to spend as a couple exactly so obviously your relationship will get challenged yeah but being constant kind of uh communication with one another and that's why i think you know now being at the 18 month mark I think we, we really were able to get through a lot of stuff to really mm -hmm. realign, uh, to come together to this, uh, a lot of agreements on certain stuff, understanding, see where the other person was coming from. But you have to be willing to go through that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that um, that's what really helped us. So embrace and understand that there will be challenges. And if you choose to ignore it and just pocket it and not mm -hmm. talk through it, uh, you will have difficulty in your relationship. Absolutely. Uh, so even as seamless as our relationship, you know, it seemed be before it did have to go through some stuff where we would have to have important conversations mm -hmm. to make sure that we feel and understand for one another and where everyone's coming from. Absolutely. I definitely think that's a topic where we can go deeper <laughs> and share more advice and tips because if I start getting into it, this video will be <laughs> another hour. So, yeah, so I, like if you guys room. want to see a video on how our relationship have changed or rather evolved since we had Alexa. Please let us know, give this video a big thumbs up first of all, and then leave us some comments down below and we'll definitely make sure to film that video as well because it's gonna be very interesting from the last video that we, we filmed. On how to have a great relationship. relationship. So how oh, okay. to have a great relationship as parents. And we've learned a lot in the first year of having it like this. So that is all for today. Oh, you, that was your last point? That's all, yeah. Oh, sweet, all awesome. My lessons. Thank you guys so much for watching this very long video and listening to us. I'd love to hear from you and what you have learned if you are a parent, what you have learned in your first year of having a child or whatever amount of years you've had your child for. It would be very interesting to hear from you guys. So please leave us comments down below. Love you guys very, very much. Do you have any last words? Yeah, just uh, as you can see, Mimi is becoming more regular on this channel and posting more videos. So make sure to more regular on no, this because, channel. No, because because the first like we were talking about this, the first year is gone now. Yeah, yeah. First, so make sure to subscribe. Make sure to put that notification bell on. It's very important for all the channels that I love. I always make sure to have the notification bell on because that way I get to see when Do new you videos know how come to put up. The bell on. Yeah, you literally just decide to subscribe. Put the little bell on, okay, get notifications, make sure your notifications are on, and more videos from Mimi coming up. Bye! Oh, yeah, and if remember to subscribe to my <laughs> channel, Alex Icon. Remember to subscribe. <laughs> and put the notification bell on that thing as well. I'm becoming more regular. <laughs>